Hi everybody, welcome back to The Quest. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We're all about finding a sailboat to make it our home and then refitting her and then sailing around the world and taking our family, friends, and anyone else who's interested along with us on the journey. So today's topic is ultralight and light displacement hulls. This is a continuation of the discussion that we started a week or so ago where we talked about heavy displacement and medium displacement hulls. So I hope you enjoy it. If you have any uh, comments or any suggestions for additional materials or if you have any specific questions about the materials that we covered today, feel free to leave a, uh, a comment in the comments section. Also, if you haven't already uh, hit the subscribe button, we encourage you to do so that you can keep up with uh, the content as we, as we change it, as we add videos. And um, uh, we look forward to seeing you in the future. Come back and see us again. Bye. Okay, so we're going to continue our discussion of hull forms, and we're going to talk about both the light displacement and the ultra light displacement hull next. But before we move into that subject, there was something that I wanted to talk about that I forgot to mention in the last video where we talked about the heavy displacement and the medium displacement hulls. And that is that heavy displacement and medium displacement hulls, one of, the, one of their distinct advantages is that they heave to very, very well. Now, that is not to say that a light displacement hull cannot heave to because they can. However, because the heavy displacement hulls have that very long, very deep keel that goes from the bow to the stern, it creates a very large slick. And because the boats are much heavier, they move around in the water a lot less, which makes for a very comfortable ride when you heave to. So, I just wanted to mention that because I felt it was important to an important advantage and, a, and an important point to bring up that I had forgotten to mention in my uh, previous video. So now on to light displacement hull. The light displacement hull is driven partially by the need for economy uh, in what had become a, a very competitive market. Lighter means less material and an increasing demand for better performance and more and more yachts are falling into this lighter yacht category. Typically with a displacement length ratio of around 200, a modern light displacement production boat often dubbed as a cruiser racer will sport a medium aspect ratio fin keel. The rudder will be either transom hung or be supported by a short skeg or uh, it can be cantilevered, uh, a cantilevered spade type rudder as you see on this particular picture. The underwater shape of these ultralights and light displacement hulls are going to be more and more dinghy-like. Uh, th there will be minimum overhangs at both the bow and the stern, which is done uh, in an effort to increase waterline length. Now if you think about some of the newer boats that you see in your marina, Today, you'll notice that there's a lot of boats that have gone to this uh, plumb bow, and then of course their um, beam is carried well aft because <clears throat> um, they pick up much of their stability through beam length uh, width. And when they carry it all the way aft, aft it really causes uh, an increase in stability and power for the boat. A lot of uh, ballast is clearly not an option for a light displacement boat. Uh, so much of its stability then is gained through increased beam. Uh, this means that when excessively healed, the asymmetry of the immersed hull sections coupled with the uh, broad beam carried well aft, as we mentioned, uh, can make it uh, very hard on the helm. <clears throat> much is to be gained by reefing these boats early and sail sailing them fairly flat. Um, performance will be brisk in pretty much all conditions, especially off the wind when the hull speed may uh, well be exceeded with a light displacement hull of this type. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sailing hard on the wind is vigor in vigorous conditions will be less comfortable than in a heavier displacement craft. Uh, the flatter forward sections uh, on these kind of boats can tend to pound 
and the ride is likely to be a bit on the lively side. Apart from uh, beating to windward in heavy weather, they are, however, a delight to sail. They point high, and they tack through the wind with ease, and passage times uh, should be um, uh, uh, very good. You should you should see uh, you know quick passage times. They won't be disappointing at all. And this is another point to uh, make here. Um, they do um, they do tack well. Uh, right through the wind uh, with ease, whereas the older, heavy keel, the long keelers, um, you really have to have a lot of way on to get them to move through the wind. So that's something to be considered. Uh, handling under power both the head and a stern uh, will be good, um, except that is when um, at low speed in a, in a crosswind. But then that that is to be said probably for most boats. I, I do realize that with the heavier boat and the longer keel, it's going to take a little bit more wind to get it moving. Um, so it will resist some of that wind, that side force. But any boat that has any um, area at all sticking up above the waterline is going to have some sail area and they are going to react to current and wind. Um, these boats being lighter, um, it takes less wind, but it's just something to be aware of. I think you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, no matter what kind of uh, uh, boat you, uh, you're you in. Um, someone, someone once said that the um, height of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over and over again uh, while expecting a different result. Um, <clears throat> I think that's very true. Um, <laughs> and so uh, my caution to anybody who is going to find themselves in a um, light hull boat uh, or any boat really would be to consider those things that are recurring and those um, aspects of that part of the sailing that are reoccurring that you have to do well uh, and then you know maybe choose accordingly if, if it's not going to drive the the choice of boat then maybe it should drive the choice of training or the choice of experience but at any rate um, you need to know your boat, and I guess that is really um, uh, the, the bottom line uh, in, in any boat when you get out there to sail it. To be safe and to be seamanlike and to be forehanded, you really have to understand your boat. So let's talk a little bit about load carrying capacity. <clears throat> I think that's important in this kind of boat. Load carrying capacity of similar light displacement boats it can be a concern. Um, clearly, if you're going to go out and sail around the world, you're going to want to load your boat out and provision it. So if you load, say, uh, 1,500 pounds of stores and equipment on a 25-foot boat with a displacement length ratio of 200, it will have a greater effect, obviously, than if you load the same amount onto a 40-footer of the same displacement length ratio. Um, the way the math works out here is the 25 foot to, uh, footers displacement length ratio uh, with 1500 pounds of gear loaded aboard would increase to 242 uh, that ratio and and then by comparison the 40 footer uh, would only increase to 210 obviously uh, more performance sapping penalty for the smaller boat so when you start talking about loading these boats out um, there, there's an argument to be made for a longer boat because you have a little more leeway uh, with regard to what's going to uh, affect your you know, uh, performance depending upon what you're putting in there. Okay, so that's the uh, um, light displacement hull. Um, lots of good things. Uh, the light, these new modern hulls are uh, really nice boats. A lot of volume down below. There's some really good advantages to them. Uh, they are fast and fun to sail. Um, and and that, that brings us to the ultralight displacement hull. Now, these ultralight displacement boats, uh, they share many of their characteristics uh, with the previous category, the light displacement. Uh, but uh, they, they, they tend to be beamier, um, they, they're lighter, um, and they have a much deeper keel. The keels um, on the Ultralight displacement hulls will be a high aspect ratio as opposed to a medium aspect ratio. And they'll have such length and depth to them that they, they will indeed 
prevent anchoring anywhere near the beach. Uh, performance in uh, in right in the right conditions, though, with uh, ultralight hull, uh, can be actually awesome. Uh, <clears throat> these types are uh, will readily unstick themselves from the limitations of uh, hull speed and plane like dinghies, and it should come as no surprise that Ted Brewer's comfort ratio isn't high on the list of design considerations for the ultralight uh, displacement hull. Uh, to build such light displacement hulls uh, whilst making them sufficiently strong uh, calls for some exotic materials, some high-tech building techniques, uh, and both of, both of which come with uh, a pretty high price tag. So um, much uh, of the cruising versions um, that you might see are going to be owned by people that have uh, very, very deep pockets, lots and lots of money. Um, optimum, for, optimum performance, handling and comfort, um, you know, really can't be found at the same place on the sliding scale of displacement. Um, you have to make some choices. Um, everything is a compromise, as they say. Uh, displacement, or more accurate, accurately, displacement length ratio, um, it really has a greater influence on the way in which a boat behaves in a given set of conditions than pretty much any other parameter and it should be uh, a crucial consideration for any prospective buyer. So that is definitely something that you need to be thinking about um, and that's one of the reasons why we bring it up here. And we are going to talk about displacement length ratio um, in greater detail when we start talking about uh, more specific things with, re uh, the, with regard to um, stability. Uh, while boats at the heavy end will have a more comfortable mos motion, uh, passage times will be slower and handling will be more cumbersome. And at the other end, the blistering performance of the ultralight uh, hull uh, could literally shake your fillings loose. So somewhere uh, in between those two extremes, uh, the, the, the coral crushing long keel or the blistering performance of the ultralight lies your displacement, your ideal displacement boat, and that's um, something that you have to make the decision on. So anyway, that wraps up our displacement um, conversation, and I hope you uh, got something out of that. There's a lot of advantages and disadvantages to all of these hull forms, and of course, I only mentioned the, the base of each hull form. There are modifications and um, subsets of each of these uh, hull forms. Um, so, you know, you, you can dig down and drill down and find all kinds of different variations. But basically, the characteristics um, as I laid them out don't change much. Um, so, that should be a pretty good starting place. If you enjoyed this um, video and uh, if you're coming to this site for the first time and you haven't subscribed or if you visit often and you still haven't subscribed, we would uh, really appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you like what you saw here, uh, we'd also like it if you'd give us a thumbs up and if you'd share uh, this video and others uh, with your family and friends uh, so that we can uh, continue to uh, build our, our community and uh, serve you with um, with good videos. Um, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, if you have any specific information that you'd like to share with us about this particular subject, or if you'd like to see uh, additional information on any particular subject, uh, please don't hesitate to drop us a line. We'd love to get your comments. We really enjoy hearing from each and every one of you. And so we, uh, we hope that you, uh, again, we hope that you enjoyed this and that you'll come back and see us. Until then, uh, fair wind and uh, fair winds and following seas from the crew of thunder. Bye.